Uh, I don't know. Uh, these people kind of a spoil, you know. They, it's like you would go and you would spit in someone's dish, you know, in a, in a, uh, you know, in his, in his. Uh, it doesn't come to me in, in his Krosnik taller plate. Okay, it, it really digs me when I think about these animals, how they behave. Uh, my God, did that behave very different from this balkanized Serbs that would come here, these Chetniks, uh, you know, who uh, also behaved disturbing, like they own this place and so on. On the MK Ultra, uh, some American folks, such as Rick Perry, such as Mitt Romney, such as few others, gestured, make sure not only British, you're gonna see in continuation, it's gonna be about Qlandia, it's like a shopping mall. Make sure Americans cried. Americans were the one they cried about the shopping mall. Complaining how difficult it is to bring their females along if there are no shopping malls. Shopping mall. Shopping mall. Uh, as this video is going to be used as some sort of promotion for, I'm not going to say American tourists. Uh, I just call this people who have lots of money do not allow us to live in their countries but want to come here and shit around here. This basically is how I see it as. Uh, it's got to be a mutual and there is nothing mutual really here. George W. Bush and insisted and few others insisted on make sure you're gonna put local flowers flowers very important we aren't gonna pay you if you're not gonna do this and that so I want to clarify for these people something here this is um, it's also in respect to the golf course make sure you're gonna go to the golf course and they're gonna see this and then how big it is and then they will understand and this and that Borat Pahar also insisted on that stuff uh, this whole thing, according to Macron, there were people who did this MK Ultra stuff. No, I'm not kidding, folks. You're supposed to take two days for this, no more than two days. After two days, it's finished. You're free, boy. You go to the dam here. You can go swim. You enjoy your life. All be taken care of. Don't talk about the Serbs. Don't talk about the Russians. This and that. Don't. Don'ts. They were all don'ts, don'ts, don'ts. Uh, they have so well procalculated MK Ultra. You have no idea about really what went on here how they want this scenarios to go on nah this isn't gonna be the end this is gonna be a lot more we're nowhere near end here don't worry about that stuff i'm not up to giving on absolutely anything when it comes when it comes to we're gonna pay you you're gonna pay nothing that this thing I'm not here to serve you, like in respect to the golf course and stuff that you're gonna see. Few photos I'm gonna give. I'm gonna go and take the photos of the shopping mall and stuff like this. I'm not here to do this kind of stuff. It was like, I ain't gonna pay him if he ain't gonna do this and this and that. This is, these people are sick. These people are totally sick. Uh, I also explain in continuation issues related to Elon Musk. Um, well, I can say it now. We're gonna F you. We're gonna screw you. We're gonna ruin your life. Ha 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 ha. This is how it all ended. And so I was, why? Why is it you wanna do this to me? Why is it you want to do it? Why, why do you want me to do this stuff? You're going to have to go and you're going to have to go when they left in 2006. 
The last words to me after eight years of torture, you know what they were? Where, yeah, where I started, where I started, one was from the Netanyahu here in the forest. I see you after like 12 years, 12 years of life is going to be wasted. You're going to make a circle like this, huge circle you're going to make it. And you're going to come exactly again to the neutral situation. And then we're going to see you after 12 years, he said. Elon Musk said, well, you know, some of us, we're going to have to do this kind of stuff. One is going to do that kind of stuff, other one is going to do that kind of stuff, and you're going to be doing so-called human rights. Hey, you're going to go nuts, you're going to go crazy, you're going to die anyways. But this is what was projected for you. I'm not here to take a photo, so I'm not a your tour guy, man. Uh, unless you want me to tour you into the jail, because this is basically what I'm working on it. I'm not interested in making any kind of deals, any kind of agreements. I'm not interested in stopping this thing anytime soon. This thing is going to the court and it's going to go all the way. And I'm pretty damn sure, I'm certain, 100% I'm sure, certain that I will obtain actually physical proofs, tapes and audio and stuff like that. As much as they try to downplay from what I see today, and if I match this, if I try to compare the atmosphere of what was under MK Ultra, how things should be, how already uh, the world is going to be cheering to the Donald Trump, to the Putin and so on, I don't actually see it. Uh, in the mainstream media, basically what I see is, <laughs> I see here and there some football star, I see some German politician, for whom, by the way, everybody around the world knows already that Germany is financing Russian aggression on Eastern Europe. Everybody can see what, uh, what this crisis, refugees crisis is all about. It's all about the hatred. Again, the German, German hatred redistributing the hatred throughout the Europe. Everybody can see what's happening. Everybody understand its picture is crystal clear. American people are pissed off with the Donald Trump, really. Donald Trump said it wouldn't be great if we would get along well. Well, you two are getting along well with the Putin, but the thing about it is the, the entire world wants to lynch both of you. Even the Russians want to lynch Putin. And Americans, make no mistake, they want to lynch you. So, yeah, whatever it is that you do, it's great. It's awesome. But it does not match anywhere even near like Macron was, like how it's going to be this and that. Macron is hated in the France. He's totally hated. People, French people despise him. Things aren't going that way. In Germany, even you have considerable amount of opposition when you consider the history of the country. Things aren't going well at all. When it comes to the Britain, things aren't really developing the way they would want. People are laughing at the Theresa May. The whole thing is rather laughable. In Italy, things did not actually even start yet. When things are going to... Actually, we are not even in a stage when I would consider this as like that it, that it actually started, that something goes on, that, that, that actually is happening. We are actually right now still in the stage when people are like a sleeping giant right now. They're still, they're watching this thing. They're watching this thing and they're waking up and you can see people protest. People go off and so on. We're nowhere near what these people have talked about under MK Ultra. Probably I would say also they pressured me with the idea that I would somehow psychologically bend down. They mentioned make sure you're gonna make that deal and it's gonna be this. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to and this and that. It's gonna be like this. It's gonna be already so advanced, they said. It's gonna be so advanced. Donald Trump, according to MK Ultra, would go and would recognize Crimea as a part of the Russia on this latest meeting. It didn't happen, folks. 
It didn't happen because he can't, because he's under enormous pressure and America is basically just waking up and is already under such pressure. When America is going to wake up, the cover is going to pop out of the uh, lift is going to pop up. It's going to blow the, the pot. People are going to come out. They're going to lynch him. They're going to they're gonna hang him over there at the Trump Towers. He's going to be hanging like a decoration for the new year. So I ain't got no plan to stop. I got no plan to make any kind of deals. I got a plan to get those physical proofs, go through the International Criminal Court, press against the people in European Union for court for human rights, press against European Union officials, press against all these politicians once I get those proofs publicly and melt you folks down. You are lagging behind. You did not manage to project me, give me some kind of impression that I would be under the rush, that it would be like, it's not going to make it through and so on and so forth. You're lagging behind totally. Atmosphere people are not in your sight. So I'm not here to carve any, any appetites, give any, uh, you know, uh, give in to any strange ideas on how I'm going to receive some kind of free money, how we have some kind of deals. We don't have any deals. The only deals we had is those are your verbal deals. The verbal deal was again, $200 billion. I know it's fucking crazy, but you did not wrote that down on a paper and you claim there was no such thing as an MK ultra either. So your claim, how you pretended for no less than 12 years, you ruined my life, my entire life, claiming basically there was no, you rated me as an insane. You rated me as an insane. Told me we're going to rate you as an insane and you're going to have to prove that you are not insane through MK Ultra so we can use this kind of issue along with un forced unemployment to push our agenda forward. This is how far you went. I will insist on a $200 billion, no less. That was your verbal offer. I will not. I saw the other day in a, in a newspaper about the, I think Bezos is his name, uh, was involved in MKUltra, was involved in MKUltra, but the guy was so nice, so quiet, so pleasant to be around i would never ever go and mention his name or go against him or anything like this like i said the only thing i did was i pressed against disgusting people if i deem that you are disgusting beyond disgusting that you totally lack of basic ethics then i did go against you against the people that have at least basic ethics that have some kind of even reason maybe you treated me badly but you had maybe a reason to do that kind of stuff i didn't even go for i just let it go i let it go away i'm strong enough i got people that matter and did problems real problems that is sufficient to me how he's got what 165 billion dollars Mr. Bezos from Amazon, uh, 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 Vladimir Putin alone has got over $200 billion. That he is the wealthiest person, Bezos. Vladimir Putin has got a palace over there by the Black Sea that is worth $1 billion in Russia. If that shit was in the United States, it probably would be worth at least probably five, six billion dollars. Imagine to have a palace huge like this along let's say some exclusive place russia doesn't have location like uh united states along the atlantic and pacific they don't have coastline like this they don't have any warm coastline it's everything located up north the only thing they have now is they have that crimea they have stolen from ukraine which is somewhat not really comparable to uh, I'm going to say to Pacific or Atlantic, but it's way warmer than up north Arctic area. You understand? So 
real estate location like they say it's everything uh, what I'm trying to say is that palace if that will be in the US comparable to that it would be like the most exclusive place in the whole United States of America now imagine the most exclusive location in the US and place that size of the palace on one and then you're gonna get the real value of what Putin has don't go and count in the rubles how much this thing is how much that thing can be purchased in Russia think about how much that thing would cost in the US so a queen has got a trillions of dollars she owns Canada she owns Australia everybody's giving her a property taxes in the Britain she owns everything uh, I just despise this kind of stupid articles on how Joe Bezos or whatever his name is uh, is wealthier for 50 billion dollar than anybody else and he's got 165 billion dollar too bad you make a verbal agreement and you push it that far and so now I have the right to push it even further on the court actually not even further exactly to what you suggested the case is gonna be so that's how we're gonna do it not here to give you a tourist I'm not a, your tour boy I'm not here to give you a tourist information on Slovenia or whatever I don't care about you I don't give a damn about your women about your wives whatever you have I don't give a damn about what I need what I care about is basically get you to the court and get basically paid for what you have done to me this is the main goal to me all right so let's continue with this tour now okay it's just yet time again to give another update here and so let's go let's give here number 11 for number 11 what you're about to see this would be exactly the location right so this is a castle we have seen a tortured castle now it's number 11 and we are ha heading now uh right through here we are heading back uh, to the toward the city of Novo Mesto, actually toward the, our house. You see, I'm gonna stop here. The house is exactly on the other side of the river. We are heading through here because it's late, it's night. Uh, at nights, we would not go through the forests. We were advised by the police not to use forests, you would use the asphalt road on the other side of the river. Uh, note also that this is a little bit longer you see we have to go to all the way here to this bridge and then back and ta -da -da. so they would complain about also about longer road preferably if they could they would use this here but you know well they they could use cars whenever they wanted to okay this isn't that this would be every night that would be like this the same people would go with me it's not the way it is sometimes they would sometimes they would not it all felt who how felt what and this and that so let's go now let's continue for number 11 let's go uh keep in mind whenever we went through here it was because it was late so that means already was evening it was night uh so when i mentioned prince harry yeah uh night time night I'm not doing this for entertainment I'm not your tour boy like some people have got an idea how they're gonna change the torture into some sort of settlement like I'm gonna pursue one as something I'm gonna be given that is gonna be given to me this is filmed for the court purposes make no mistake about that if you want to get flowers go and take the photos yourself uh, this place when we would go back this was dilemma for Prince Harry uh folks uh he would here would take uh you know how do you say would use would release himself and you know always in here you know paranoia basically uh somebody could jump out smartphone android you got to be careful this and that folks these people in the united states of america have ruined my life to the point that I would not even use a smartphone because of these people. These people insisted I should buy a smartphone. Basically, whatever these people insisted me, I didn't want to have anything to do with. What I wanted to have is my life. Uh, basically, I wanted to have my freedom. I went to the U.S. to avoid my family here. And 
in the US and wanted to have a freedom from these pedophiles, rapists, MK Ultra maniacs that stole in my life. And so I would not even use a telephone Android until year 2017. This is true. Uh, what did uh, Belgrade Mafia, they had a whole bunch of issues in their head. There was, it was a whole bunch of things that went. They involved Kara Djordjevic. Kara Djordjevic is ousted uh, descendant of the queen of the king who ran from here from the neo-nazis uh, basically first he went in bed with the neo-nazis he signed the agreement with the neo-nazis once the war started because people disagreed with it he took off with the plane to London and he have hidden himself a neo-nazi a fascist inside of the Buckingham Palace. How about that? At the same time, you had Norwegian Harald, King Harald running away from Norway, who never agreed anything to have anything to do with the Nazis. And they would basically be at the same place. How about this? Uh, Kara Djordjevic dream about, dreams about somehow how to get on a power in Serbia at all costs. So what he would do is, he would also need somebody some way somehow to start some kind of king dynasty again in Serbia and then spread into other areas of the Yugoslavia. Uh, Borut Pahor, Borut Pahor, that's an interesting one. Uh, like I said, people like Musk, Alan Musk, many others would come here, would get wealthy. What would happen is they would just give them like this money. Uh, many would land exclusive licenses, so they would become representatives for American billionaires uh, in China. So you would they would have like handle the eBay. Uh, it would be all kinds of stuff. They would get opportunities. People would get. How can I say it's I'm gonna repeat exactly what they told me back then. This is like you're like a small fish uh, that feeds around big fish. You know, when it's like a big fish is they eat something, they or animals, let's say, a carcass or whatever, there's always something left for the birds, for the uh, for the smaller animals that they get their part. Uh, and so these people, these people would become wealthy. They would. It was very good. Billionaires. Some of them became billionaires. Um, me, on the other hand, no, because it was not convenient for the Belgrade. It was not convenient for Moscow. It was not convenient for Ljubljana. And on top of that. You have to think about that if I would get the money, obviously at age 23, I left this place. I didn't want to be here because of these criminals here. Nobody wants to be around these Balkans. Russia is very beautiful. Slovenia is very beautiful. This is very beautiful. Serbia is very beautiful. But what does that beautiful do to you if you have a criminal on every corner preying on you? That doesn't do much for you in that case, right? You can have the most beautiful place in the world, but what is that does for you if the place is situated with a with a filth, with the gangsters, with the scum? You probably don't want to be there because that's probably when it's the most beautiful place and 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 in the hands of the criminals, it turns into actually in a hellhole. It takes the taste for life away from you. So these people would not want to let me go away because what they want, they want their own deals. And so Borat Pahor came up with idea on started how with this human rights, how are we going to collect the money? How he's going to help me out? How are they going to provide the safety for me? And in the end, actually, they're going to actually demonstrate how much money they have spent on my safety. The one who would support him as a matter of fact, who would replace him would be Marian Sharitz. This is the new dude, new in a parenthesis again, a friend of Borat Pahar, just like personal, just like Karl Ryavets. Both of them were involved in MK Ultra. And so you have a mafia, you have a criminals going, 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 molesting 
they would not let you fucking live and in the end they want to give you they want to show you the bill how much money they spend on you and you have according to them even an agreement with them how would you like this shit how would you like this balkan mafia you probably understand now why i left from here why i didn't want to be here nobody wants to be here they insisted one time in belgrade how they're going to give me a serbia like the same like the Vucic promised the French soccer players now a stadium over there in Serbia 10 million euros or dollars in a stadium uh, I told them thank you very much under MK Ultra they want to have nothing to do with it I just want to stay away from it as far the hell I can and this is just no different today as it was under MK Ultra I don't want to know about it I don't want to see it and I don't want to use profanities right now. <laughs> Let's just go on with it. Because life is about something beautiful is exactly why. When you see, have something beautiful around you, your life is fulfilled. And it's exactly the opposite, vice versa. When you have something ugly, filthy, criminal around you, and you have to see that thing 24-7, your life is ruined. I have fought, uh, personally have fought for existence of these people of this country. The last thing that would that I would do really would be for me to go and uh, work against my own principles for the sake of some criminals from Belgrade, for the sake of some Serboslavia, Yugoslavia, or something like that. Right, this here, this place here, involved even Russian females, not only Russians, uh, which at times are very violent. Um, you know who I'm talking about. This was not very nice here. Uh, but those are different times. Uh, I just hope these people have, you know, civilized themselves. I hope they did. Uh, Vova, Shoigu, <laughs> right hand of Putin, were into this place here, and here is where they have their schizophrenic episodes their paranoia they enlave themselves into abductors and they believe that this bullshit is going to get into my head and i would be paranoid and afraid and would leave inside of the room locked inside away from where i have spent basically my entire childhood like i said this is the same this is no different if some than if somebody would go and would spit in your dish in your plate from which you eat the same thing is this thing here this is what these people have done to me here that's pretty much what this explains i'm not the only one other people can tell you the same thing about this russian people and about the serbian people these people have a habit to to just they don't they don't put like let's say uh food on a table and you know you can take whatever you want you know save yourself but it's like you have to you have to try this you have to eat this and soon this turns into other issues you have to do this now you have to do that you have to do this and you have to do that that is a good boy and that is a bad boy these people are like this, these people are like that. They have tendency to basically push people, you know, totally uncivilized, like... Uh, it's, it's, it's a way when you offer a person, when you, you say, yeah, would you like to try some of this or some, something like that? This is different. It's like, eat this, eat that, that good, that no good. You're supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. And they use the language, normalno, not normalno, normal, not normal, not normalno, normalno and everything under control, like the guy yesterday reminded me here at the castle. Uh, totally bizarre, and I would say uncivilized, uh, irrational, and this is why the whole thing is the way it is. Corruption and criminality, they saw me like animals it's like 
wow why the f this guy likes animals this is how it was under mk ultra they had those goats already back then they had cows they had horses and it was it was why does this guy likes animals and the next thing was we have animals in the russia too and so if he likes the animals we're gonna look for the place where we, he is abducted where he's gonna be abducted to the russia where they have a lot of animals where they have deer and stuff like this so he he can be there i mean these are like these are animals in a real sense folks but basically the same scenario this this again all uh, along the road they would be hiding inside uh there was grass up there back then wow they started to clean this place like big time this place was not like this folks it was like grass like you see over there it's not clean it was everything like this i'm gonna point you some farms you will see this is why they came here you see i'm gonna point you some farms and stuff you will be able to see it uh <laughs> i mean macron actually they they were like uh, they insisted these people insisted that this place have to be cleaned up that things have to be renovated and stuff like this so they did left all their houses and stuff like that uh the rest they totally cleaned up cut the grass like never ever was before this place was a completely different place you see right there that's called the ringlo right there that red thing fruit what a delicious thing that is but i'm not gonna make it i don't eat anything for at home but basically what i do is i go like this along the road i go and it's the same thing they have done it too and then here and there i find some fruit like this and i take it i don't want to eat anything whatever my father has in the garden uh to me uh that i would eat anything from this individual that is loaded with the money and you know could buy himself uh a very good brand new car every year uh and has thousands of dollars in guns in fishing poles uh reels fishing reels and all that stuff luxurious life um he retired earlier than other people based on disability and stuff like this he claimed health related issues and lived extremely wealthy life uh, he's like oh i got to work at age 85 on the garden and stuff like this no it's because he wants to do that because he wants to grow organic food and stuff like this uh, this really is the reason why now uh, as far as the food this is so cheap here the food uh, I'm gonna give you some prices and stuff you're gonna be able to see for a uh, uh, hundred and fifty dollars you can cook for the whole family here in Slovenia and eat very well uh, but I say anyways that they spent hundred euros on me per month which they do not but you know i just want to finish this stuff and get whatever this criminals owe me and go on with my life uh and take care of the people that are involved in this place them where they belong to this location here this was the spot of the harry right here this would be the place for him to be and his girls whomever he would have whenever sometimes those girls he was with would not even know he was here with other girls uh forests that's where the people were bodyguards were making sure about his safety make no mistake about that stuff a little update on location uh right here where it says otochets we're gonna call this number 12. this here in fact is known as Schempeter, Saint Peter. And if you remember the bridge, this is exactly right there across the bridge. That's a very important monument right there that was dedicated to the National Resistance Front against the neo Nazis, fascists. It was dedicated to the partisans. 
All right, folks, uh, this is a statue dedicated to the national resistance uh, to the partisans, Slovenian partisans. Uh, see, OF is missing right there. That's Liberation Front, Svobodilna Fronta. But on this side, we have this uh, sign here, which really no longer stands for, you know, what one represented back then. Uh, so I'm going to get back to the sign in a little bit, uh, but uh, let's see what this, how this looks like. This is a memorial dedicated to them, uh, not too far from Otoches, you know, maybe, maybe a kilometer and a half, something like this. They're all partisans that gave, including female, uh, females, gave their lives for existence of this people here, this Slovenian people here. It's nothing for the freedom, it's really for the existence, really. Because the goal was to exterminate Slovenian people. Okay, uh, the only thing the Russians did, this is a Shoigu. You see that thing right there? Shoigu. Uh, this is on the way to Novo Mesto, to basically to our house on the other side of the river. Uh, the only thing they did is they insisted and insisted they basically raped people here with their crazy mentality that they just have to stick this on memorial. This thing does not belong on this memorial because everybody in this country had the right to stand up against the Nazism, against the fascism. Not only those who have seen themselves as a communist but also other lots of other people mainly other people that who were not even communists they joined partisans they joined resistance against the germany against the italy uh, and so this here this is the only thing that the russians did really for this place here uh that sickle right there and hammer that's it uh, you put this here you do this you do this you know I uh, gotta excuse myself for a haircut, but I sleep in that cage, so it doesn't exactly represent, reflect my real uh, image here. Uh, look, folks, um, I'm never gonna give up from this stance. It's basically every Slovenian that should be a member of National Resistance Front. This isn't about the Nazism, fascism. Uh, this foremost is about existence uh, if they would have won this war we would not even exist not we would not Poles, not Czechs, not the Russian nobody nobody would exist so this is something I'm gonna uh, insist on and it's extremely extremely important for me uh, to welcome back to Slovenia Slovenian people that went worldwide to other locations that they feel here in Slovenia like it's their home. Uh, it's extremely important for me to assure that people that um, who were somehow in this German military who many times they were forcefully conscripted in one. If they wouldn't join one, if they wouldn't go into it, they would shoot them. Uh, there were many people who made the terrible mistakes. Uh, there are many people who don't see themselves as um, communists. They see themselves as whatever they see themselves as. Uh, whatever political options are out there uh, on a the scene. But the most important thing, however, that unites us, that should unite us all. However, like I said, it's not about the Nazism, fascism. It's about existence. Nazism, fascism had a broad idea of extermination of the people. Uh, and yeah, we do fit in that rank of the people that should be, according to them, exterminated. But I don't want to divide country on issues when it's the most important issue on a table. And that's basically issue of existence none of us would survive not even those of you who would go and you would collaborate with the nazis with the fascists 
they will get a hold of you and exterminate you too because you are just not I'm gonna say you're just not fit according to their standards you understand that's why it doesn't matter whether you are in a green party or you are in I don't know what kind of party is that you are a Christian or whatever party you are it doesn't matter to be a member of this uh, movement national resistant movement this is actually a duty this is actually something that uh, is something that you have to live by it's the lifestyle this is what you have to go by if you want to call yourself as a Slovenian this is basically how I see it right, in this location in this place here as we go again I'll show you that on the map I gotta remind myself of that so I'm not gonna forget that uh, there was a young couple, Roma and uh, a Slovenian guy, also involved in NK Ultra. And they had a few other people, locals here. Uh, in case you wonder, <laughs> why is it that I don't go and record, video record people involved in NK Ultra? Because there were numerous from the city that were involved. Because I would screw myself and even give publicity to someone uh, really nothing would have done for me uh, there were so many people involved and the only thing that would do is it would it would trigger troubles for me uh, because it would turn people against me uh, that's the main reason why but yes they do stalk and they love to expose themselves and they want me to take videos of them uh, I'm just not going to do it. It doesn't do any good to me. The only thing it would do is it would help psychiatrists. It would say uh, an individual claims uh, that you know so many people and this and that, and uh, you know that everybody is talking to him and this and that. So that's why I don't do it, even if they want me to. Uh, I just don't simple as this not even the people i have spoken about i don't want to put them on a video uh, i mean unless you're like really 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 evil uh not even those i still have uh, on the videos i just don't put people on the video that's all it is the owner of this place here this company was involved and throughout all these settlements these settlements are no different it was no different situation with these settlements as it was on the opposite side of the river this is where we would go back to our house and this is why naturally why look how everything is streamed grass it was not like this back then it was like huge grass then they started to trim then they started to pay attention to the environment uh, and so on and a little bit i'm going to show you like a little farm interesting place that place was like like you see those bushes right there like totally totally wild today it's so trimmed uh, grass is cut uh, so clean that you you could not recognize it's like that house right there I mean you could play golf there So, nothing like this before in Yugoslavia, and nothing like this before even in Slovenia, until sometimes 2003. Then things started to change because of this psychiatrists. Actually, I am mistaken, things started to change already in 98. But I do remember here it was also sometimes 2001 2002 uh, they had arguments with the people from here board power insisted to have this place cleaned up trimmed grass and now look at it i'm just saying not like this by coincidence or because of the farming needs it's because of other purposes other reasons and there are tourists now here 
there's also a camp for the people but I just didn't go there because I ain't got no business to be there I'm not a tourist guide uh, I'm just doing my stuff here I want to get over with and that's about it there might be some fruit here some more fruit for me the one who took advantage of this was Macron he would go and he would take the fruit and I remember there is forward another one like this in Glo and we had a discussion because there is a house right across the road if it's ethical to take the fruits from there or not and Borut Pahar finally uh, concluded that conclusion he made a conclusion that it's not ethical because it would be people that would come across the street to get this the, this is just totally abandoned this trees nobody is from here because it's a dust from the road nobody cares about this stuff but this stuff is very good this is natural <laughs> organic if you would say totally wild macron um i can barely hold my myself right now i'm about to go and burst into a laughter emmanuel macron was a specialist in green gauge whatever you want to call him as per what you i'm about to explain to you uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, you know the video that you have seen about the river? That area, this is like a pure jungle. Eh? I'm not going to say that this is like there were no people that walked in there ever. They did. But the people that walked in there, according to Macron alone, uh, including him, were disappointed. Uh, however, Emmanuel Macron did go inside of that jungle inside to look for Green Gage. He was obsessed with the green gauge and I like one too. Uh, the thing is I wouldn't go in there because you can get a tick. You can get ticks and then you get the Lyme disease and that's like not worth it. I mean that's crazy. That's not worth it to go for uh, inside in that thing. There's a lot of ticks here. I gotta say this. So it's something you don't want to play with. You don't want to get into bushes and stuff like this. Uh, just want to keep out um, in the summertime and even spring you got to be very careful with that stuff but anyway Macron Emmanuel Macron was a paranoid when he came to the even fruit food 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 was one of the biggest concerns of Emmanuel Macron and there's another proof of MK Ultra because the state officials and it doesn't matter where it is as long as from outside of the Germany, outside of the Italy, outside of the France, outside of the Britain, outside of the US, Canada, anywhere in Eastern Europe, anywhere in Africa, anywhere in the Middle East, if he would go, wherever he would go, Emmanuel Macron, uh, very, very, very cautious with the food. Uh, state officials, people that deal, uh, I should say, or they dealt with Emmanuel Macron, no exactly what I am talking about and in this case it didn't only concern him I mean you get Macron this is not a stupid thing it's just a really caution I mean you're not you imagine world leaders and entire background of politics scene and business people gather in place in one place and do like biggest deals you possibly can imagine it's about enormous amounts of money technology transfer and all kinds of stuff is involved uh, they would have like a special I'm not gonna say special team but they would have always Americans uh, Germans and French they would always have people that will be like separated from like not really separated from official team but there was always very few people that would do also they would have like a little bit different lifestyle than the rest of it uh, let's say food wise and would observe others on how they they would very much observe one another on how they uh, conduct how they behave if they could possibly acknowledge anything irregular strange on one another they were never here alone they always had people around them of course bodyguards but also other people and would be very cautious about their dealings so as much as Americans 
very unhappy, dissatisfied here with the local uh, distribution, redistribution of the fruits. Uh, yum, yum. Uh, Americans are a little bit also paranoid when it comes to the fruits and salads, you know. Uh, at one time, what they want to do is they want to eat burgers, and on another time, they want to eat uh, a salads. I mean, uh, from one extreme to another, basically, is how I see it. Uh, they give too much a little bit on organic, on so-called organic, and too little on other health habits and so on. It's very, very disbalanced society. But anyways, um, dissatisfied with local redistribution of fruits, perishables, they organize their own connections from outside of Europe, which they would give here to local, let's say, owner of the Tush. This owner of the Tush would get like really, really good connections, so they would deliver, that's like market chain uh, in Slovenia, Tush. Uh, they would distribute them fresh fruit and fruit that in some cases we didn't even have and they would, they would bring this to the local markets so they would have these people here that were supplying them uh, basically with the list of uh, you know the politicians just basically tell their people you get me this 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 what what basically I want they have their people shopping and doing stuff for them and so they would supply them and um, they would eat, they would just yum, 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 but Macron was not like this. And it was also a few other people, also not. And it would always observe other people. Macron, I heard this from Borat Pahor. You know, I, I listened to everything, whatever I could get a hold of it, I always listened and analyzed. I always wanted to know, uh, you know, various, from various perspectives, how they feel, see things as how is it you know when you're dealing with such important issues and really it was uh, they utilized like maximum precautions precautions when he came to the stuff like this uh emmanuel macron was relied heavily on fruits that he could find somewhere like this in the nature so he would go he would scout areas and would get uh, green gauge apples and stuff like this from trees that like random trees abandoned trees he wouldn't go and steal or anything like this but stuff like this along the road that is abandoned that is just he would go and he would just attack that stuff and yum yum that was it uh another reason was my father because my father was really nasty man he was they would pay him something for the fruit uh and i'm not saying that i mean what i'm trying to say is that to me, uh, well, it's all relevant. I explained this at the end of the video. I mean, his son-in-law, uh, not really son-in-law, but son-in-law from my sister, uh, got rewards, financial cash from the European Union for some kind of events and stuff like this. Got to work, uh, like I already said, in a company from his schoolmate, I think it was even his schoolmate, Omar Zell, minister, he became a minister, got exclusive licenses uh, for certain technology, like monopoly, basically, on here in Slovenia, to sell exclusive technology, got a special contract through the state, and this guy was just like a, next to him, like a left hand, would, would be his director of the company, and his brother, uh, my niece's husband, became wealthy he's got i don't know how many people working for him and stuff like this so it was never was like a direct cash like this beyond what i have stated which already is cash i explained this at the end of the video uh this is how they have rationalized basically but my father is very selfish very uh how can i say he doesn't think beyond himself really he doesn't give a shit uh you could go you could kill his entire family in front of him as long as you would spear him he wouldn't give a jack dime about it you get this this is a real father he's very materialistic uh self-concerned person is what it is that's all there is to it and so 
even they paid him something little I understand for these fruits here actually it was not even little if you would go buy fruits you would get them in a supermarket cheaper whatever a lot cheaper or whatever but I can kind of understand that stuff doesn't matter to me what I'm trying to say is that he was nasty he was extremely extremely nasty with his people uh, self-concerned self-considered person uh, not somebody who would like to host anybody this individual could not even stand relatives here in the house uh, he would kick one time he did in the middle of the night not once but my aunt would insult her she came from Austria here would insult her to the point that the only thing would happen is she would and he, he didn't this only to her he did to other relatives as well <laughs> he plays them insult them so much basically tell them he, he doesn't want them here and this and that they, these people would literally leave in the middle of the night and they didn't have where to go and so on so this is my father is like I said the individual is not completely sane but anyhow it doesn't matter um, my father how can I say um, everybody almost got into the physical fight with him into the physical confrontation with my father my father they did slap him quite a few times quite a few people did and at the beginning of this ordeal what they did is they placed him even inside of the mental hospital just to clear his ideas about how special he is or that he is entitled to something this is a materialistic demented person who got who inherited the property basically from my grandfather uh, his sister have sold him the other half of the house from my grandfather that was the house in the city which he paid easily through the uh, state loans uh, he got a stable employment here people in Yugoslavia they would you would get employment and you would keep one for 40 years till you went into retirement this is how it was before in Yugoslavia now it's different but that's how it was back then and another thing is you could take a loan that was worth it, let's say hundred thousand dollars and you did this in dinners in Yugoslav dinners and within like three four years uh, the loan uh, the, the, uh, because of the money devaluation would turn into instead now into 50,000 uh, US dollars so the only thing you had to do is basically save the money in German marks dollars and stuff like this and very soon that would turn into ten thousand uh, dollars and so on you would pay basically fraction on what you have taken in respect to the loan it's also Tito was an extremely, extremely bad economist. He didn't have any clue about the economy. Uh, no clue whatsoever. A very good person. Uh, a person that stood by the people in the worst moments of the history. Uh, but when it came to economy and stuff like this, uh, this was for him something completely... Um, you know one thing are human rights and then uh you know and how you want to how you would like to see things for the people and stuff like this and then something completely different than is the you know the reality basically reality is based on the competition survival is based on the competition that's how it is let's say okay and so uh my father never considered the stuff like this that all the money he got for free and from my grandfather and all that stuff I was never ever anything I was told at age 23 basically go F yourself get the F out of here I don't want to see you anything and the only thing I held in my hands was a plane ticket uh, I don't know how many dollars may I think just enough for one tennis shoes and that pretty much was it I caught the plane uh, over there in Munich for Frankfurt and from Frankfurt to Miami basically I went like they say here in Slovenia with a strebuhom za kruhom with a stomach after the bread to America where I worked 20 hours seven days a week my father didn't care he told me I don't ever want to go see you go F yourself get out of here get lost 
that was it that was a goodbye that was a farewell from my father this is the kind of person really this individual is he can fake he can do whatever he wants to do here whatever they brainwashed him teached him that's why they did place him inside on the mental hospital they placed him inside it's not written anywhere this is a confidential stuff but they did this so they could clear his ideas about